When it comes to diprotic acids, there are a few things we can know about them and how we treat them, and there are three different little calculations that we're going to work on. So one of the things about diprotic acids is that they dissociate in two steps. So in this case here, this hydrogen come off in one step, and the other hydrogen come off in another step. Now because we have two steps, there are going to be two different Ka's, and we're going to find out that the first Ka is always larger than the second Ka. So it's going to be, you know, uh, uh, some certain amount, you know, energy to pull off that first one, and then to pull off the second one is always more difficult. The three calculations, we want to go and look at what's the pH of just an acid solution, a diprotic acid solution. We might ask what's the uh, concentration of the anion, okay, so after it's lost those two, what's the concentration of that anion in the solution? And the last thing is what's the concentration of that ion, anion when uh, the pH has been adjusted by adding some other acid? So it's kind of a weird question, but you can always tell what it is when it talks about the pH has been adjusted. Now the first thing, when we're looking at equations, you can say I'm going to use H2S because it's simple to write. And for that one, you can see that the H2S would react with water, it would donate a proton, and we get H3O plus and HS minus. Then that HS minus can continue to react with some water, donate another proton, and become H3O plus and S2 minus. We can form that anion there. So for the first uh, equation, we would have our first Ka, and we can see it's going to be H3O plus times HS minus divided by the H2S, and water is not part of the equation because it's a liquid. And for the second step, we can see we have the same, same, same sort of thing, H3O plus S2 minus divided by the HS minus. And for this values here, the, the Ka for the first one is 10 to the minus 7, so it's a pretty weak acid. And for the second proton coming off, that's 10 to the minus 19th. It's much, much, much weaker. And it's always true that this guy is going to be smaller than the Ka1. Now, the first kind of equation is one where we say, calculate the pH of a solution of H2S. So if we want the pH, then we really want to get the H plus concentration. And since this is a weak acid, we're going to be doing an ice box. But here's the situation. We have two equations, and I've rewritten them uh, by sizing. And we're showing, you know, the first one is a, a weak acid, and so therefore it's reactant favored. So H2S plus H2O turns into H3O plus and HS minus. Okay, not very much of those two. And then because the second one is so much smaller than this HS minus and H2O, hardly breaks up at all into H2O plus and S2 minus. So in the solution, I need some H plus, or we can think of that as H3O plus. And that H3O plus is going to come from here and from here, but that H3O plus from the second equation, this is really insignificant. So we can pretty much say, if we have a solution of H2S, let's pretend that it is just a, a monoprotic acid, and we're just going to use the Ka1 for our reaction. So here's how we go back and solve. I've adjusted things a little bit so we can see that we have a um, ice box. So I'll label this ice. And like we've done before, this is a 0.1 molar solution. And H2O, since it's a liquid, we don't even need to worry about it. And implied that's 0 and 0. So we're going to say x of that goes away, plus x, plus x. So we have x, x, and we have 0.1 minus x. Now at this point, I'm going to pretty much stop, because you can see what we have is we have our standard icebox problem. We want to get our value of x, and we're just going to use the Ka1 and the Ka1 expression. So we're going to use the K expression where we have H3O plus times HS minus divided by H2S, and it's going to be x squared over 0 0.100 minus x. And we can just solve for x. So if we have a problem where we have a diprotic acid solution, all we want to do is to just assume it's a monoprotic acid and just use the Ka1 as our value of Ka.
And that's how we solve that sort of problem. Okay, second kind of problem. It says on here, calculate the S2 minus concentration in a H2S solution. Now it turns this one is even easier. And the answer is the S2 minus concentration is equal to the Ka2 or the anion concentration okay is the equal to the Ka2 and here's why when you have uh, this equation okay then it breaks up to be H3O plus and HS minus now the H3O plus and HS minus those are equal at this point because every time uh, one of these you know donates a proton to the other we get one of each of those so these two are equal now it does continue the HS minus in second step does continue in insignificant amount to further uh, donate protons but that is so tiny that this is essentially true these two are equal so if those two are equal we can come back to our Ka2 expression and see the H3O plus HS minus that's this one and this one if they're equal then they cancel out and if they cancel out we can see that our Ka2 is equal to the S2 minus concentration and that's going to be true. It doesn't matter what this concentration is. Because of the equilibrium, if they ever want to know what's the S2 minus, it's just the Ka2. And that's all. No calculations involved. Now the third one is a kind of an odd situation. And here we're saying, what is the S2 minus concentration in a solution of H2S in which the pH has been adjusted to some number by the addition of a strong acid? Now when you see those kind of words that the pH has been adjusted, then we see that's a different kind of a problem. And what we need to do is come back and say, okay, here are the two steps for a Ka1 and Ka2. And we can see what happens. That's going to cancel. And we end up with a reaction that says H2S plus a couple of waters is going to turn into two H3O pluses and an S2 minus. Now we could simplify that and you know leave out the waters and get uh, two H pluses and an S2 minus. Now since we were able to add these two equations to get this equation then we can multiply their Ka's in order to get the Ka of the overall equation. So we can see what's going to happen. We have Ka is equal to the concentration of H3O plus squared times the concentration of S2 minus all over the concentration of H2S and the waters don't enter into there and the number we're going to get we multiply 1.1 times 10 to minus 7 and 1.0 times 10 to minus 19 so I can do that in my head 1.1 times 10 to the negative 26. Tiny, tiny, tiny number. Now, we go back to the problem. We have three values here. We're trying to find this one. We're solving for this. So we're okay. H2S, that's given in the problem. So we'd substitute this in here. And the H3O plus, since we say the P, we know the pH, then we know the H3O plus concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 6 and that is squared and then we just have to solve the problem so we know this we know this we know this and we're going to solve for the S2 minus concentration and those are the three different kinds of problems that we have with diprotic acids